not in one. If you have it, say amen. amen. And Saul yet breathing out threatening and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth when his eyes were open. He saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat or drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. He has seen a vision, in a vision, a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he has done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way. For he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Let the church say amen. amen. Father, bless this word. Touch the hearts of the hearers. Lord, that you may say what you want to say through me. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I want to use for a subject today, I know I've been changed. I know I've been changed. Paul is one of the most talked about men of all Christendom. But no matter how someone turns out, they didn't start their way. And that's why I always tell people, don't ever put anybody out. I've heard people make statements like, they'll never be nothing or they'll never be saved. I'm sure they said the same words about Paul. But there's a thing about it, once you're going on your own knowledge, you, you will do anything. But once God get a hold to you, amen, what you were doing before, hey, a man used to come on 60 Minutes and say, and now, the rest of the story. Paul was born in the Greek city of Tarsus in Asia Minor. Born a Roman citizen, he was brought up by his Jewish parents. Not much was said about his parents. He was a native Israel, Israeli, Israelite of the stock of Israel from the tribe of Benjamin. You know, that's the smallest tribe. A Hebrew of Hebrews and Israelites on both sides, his father and his mother, circumcised on the eighth day. The apostle was known by the name of Saul. That was his Hebrew name. This was the Jewish name which he received from his Jewish parents. He was destined to be a rabbi. That's a master, a teacher, a doctor of law. His father was a Pharisee, and his father sent him to be educated in Jerusalem at the tender age of 13. And he sat under the capable hands, of capable feet of Gamaliel, one of the famous doctors of law. And he was a great leader of the Pharisees. Do you know it took 13 years, 15, let me get my note right there. 15 years to complete the school of learning to be a doctor of law. 
Paul was a very studious student. He listened very carefully to his teachers. And what they taught him got indwelled in him to the point they weren't really preaching the Lord. They were preaching Judaism. And as you know, God gave them 10 commandments and they made another 400 and some to go along with it. Amen. If your wife cooked your food wrong, you could divorce her. Hallelujah. Watch out now. Yeah, next time y'all next time y'all burn that chicken. When Paul was a zealous student, they said that he excelled above the other students. And so it came natural that Paul would be a leader in the Jewish faith because he was so passionate about what he did. Uh, that's why sometimes I sit back and I look at all the good things that God do for people, but they're not passionate about serving him. And they're not passionate about the service of God. And it's always like, what can you give me? And when you can't give me, then I don't, I don't want to talk to you. And some of them got in the nerve and said, you're supposed to be saved. Yeah, you too. You're supposed to be saved too. You're supposed to be just as holy as I am. Mm -hmm. And they look at you to get leadership. I know much is given, much is required. But from the least to the pulpit, all got to be the same. Amen. Amen. When you, you know that when you're in leadership, folk looking at you. And some of them are looking at you and waiting for you to fall. Amen. So you got to make sure that you call it. You can't call yourself. That's why I always tell preachers, I didn't call you. You came to me. And so if you got any complaints, I'm not the complaint department. And that he called you. And what he wants you to do is to do what his words say. Paul was so strung out about doing it. Matter of fact, he got to the point that he thought all Jews were heretics. That kind of sounds like our uh, system today. A heretic means that they believe what's being taught generally by the teachers in this case. We have the same thing going on in our system today. If you're a Republican or you're a Democrat, the Republicans calling the Democrats crazy. The Democrats call them Republican crazy. And what's the ones in the middle? Liberals call them both of them crazy. In other words, if you don't believe and do what I say, I was reading an article this morning. Y'all remember back when the Democrats were in and they, and they came up with the Affordable Health Care Act? If y'all recall, they did the same thing that the Republicans just did. They had meetings alone by themselves. Republicans weren't in there at all. And the man that's in charge of the Republicans right now, O'Connell, he made all of these statements about how wrong it was and how the American public didn't have a chance to put their word in. And he's doing the exact same thing. Always tell me, be careful what you say about somebody else because pretty soon it could be you. And don't, you see, you don't speak in terms of condemnation when you're speaking about, you speak in terms of condemnation when you're talking about somebody else. But when it's you, you want mercy. But see, God will let you ride for a while. But pretty soon, God got a time when he, when he judges. And you got to watch out for judgment. I repeat, Mick Markham, you say, here come the judge. Yeah, here come the judge. He's on his way. And he's going to judge you for what you've done, not by the basis of what's written in a doctrine book of some religious organization that got it together and did not include what the Bible said. This is what your book is. The gospel book. Hallelujah. So Paul said, I got to get rid of all these Christians. Yeah. Same thing's going overseas right now. They're killing folk because they're Christians. They say, if you're not Muslim, we're going to kill you. If you want to turn Muslim, we all right. Uh, now Paul went to the chief priest and got letters that, that gave him the authority to make arrest. Right. And when y'all see that term that way, he said, if you see anyone in the way... Well, what that means is when, whenever you see that about that in, in Acts, when they say in the way, that means they, they were talking about the way of Christ. Those were the Christians that followed the teachings of Jesus Christ. So if he said, if you found anybody that's talking other than what we're talking, I give you the authority to arrest them, whether they be male or female, bring them back to Jerusalem, and we're going to persecute them. The persecution of the church was going on, and this, I think it started basically right after the assassination or the crucifixion of 
the stoning of Stephen, the first martyr. Paul was contributory to that. He didn't throw any rocks, but he held the cloak of the men that did throw the rocks. Amen. So he was complicit. Amen. You know, you can, you, can, you can be the driver of a bank robbery. Right. Never went in the bank, never pulled a gun on nobody, but because you're out there, you're complicit in it, and you're going to get the same time. Right. So Paul was just as guilty as if he would have thrown a stone to kill him. So the Christians, some Christians got scared and they ran, ran as far as Damascus. So Paul said, I'm not just getting the folks right here around Asia and, and Samaria. I want to go as far as I can reach. Y'all know Damascus was 140 miles from Jerusalem. Boy, now that's some hate, isn't it? That's 140 miles from here. That's the other side of Richmond. Way down 360. That's the way I go home to my hometown. Way down 360. You will have that much hate to go that far to bring somebody back to put them in prison because they have a different belief than you. Paul had hate for the church. But you know one thing about it, you can have hate, but God got the power. The Bible says that while he was on his way to Damascus, now you got to think about that. A day's journey, the, the most they could do in a day's journey would be 20 miles. And that would be a feat. 20 miles. Okay, they were riding a horse, but 20 miles. You ever rode a mile on a horse? So 20. Took him a while to get there. The scriptures declared that he was almost in Damascus. So when a light from heaven Hey. Shine round about him. Knocked him from his beast. People getting into so many arguments about what well, was he walking? A woo different. He fell on the ground. We don't worry about the little small detail. A light came from heaven and he fell to the ground. And he heard a voice, but he saw no man. The men that were with him heard a voice, but they didn't see nobody. So what's going on? Jesus was talking to him. Saul, Saul, why persecuteth thou me? It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Uh, they call it a prick or a gourd, G-O-A-D-S. It was a, a, a wooden rod. One end of it went in the ground and plowed. Y'all city people don't know nothing about plowing. And the other end was a sharp point. That kept the oxen going. Uh, if they kicked back, they would kick against the prick. And it would hurt them and would go forward. In other words, what Jesus was telling them, you can't persecute Christ without hurting yourself. Oh, yeah. So he said, Paul, Paul, why persecute thou me? He said, who art thou? He said, I am Jesus whom you persecute. Then Paul, you got to watch what you ask for. Paul said, Lord. What would you have me to do? You better be careful when you're talking to the Lord. Do you really want the Lord to tell you what he wants you to do? Mm-hmm. Well, I got people all the time. God, what you, whatever you want me to do, then I go to him and, you know, I can't do that. But Paul, he didn't, he didn't know what he was actually saying. He said, okay, get up. Go on in Damascus. But the Bible said when he got up, he couldn't see. So the people that's with him had to help him. Can you imagine what's going on in Paul's mind while all of this is transpiring? You ever been in a situation and even in the midst, midst of the situation, you ask yourself, what in the world am I doing here? Oh, y'all too holy for me. You ain't never been in that situation, huh? You say, I'll never be, go over there again. And next thing you know, you find yourself over there. You say, I ain't going to never take another drink. Next thing you know, you're over the sink. <sighs> All right, now. It must have confused Paul because something like this has never happened to him before. He said, how can I persecute Jesus? Remember, Jesus spoke about that in a while. He, too, he said, I, when I was sick, you didn't come see me. When I was hungry, 
You didn't feed me. He said, well, where in the world were you hungry or sick and I didn't come to feed you? He said, when you do it to the least one of mine, you done it unto me. So don't worry about folk that's persecuting you. They're not persecuting you. You are persecuting Jesus. Because if you're doing God's work and folk come against you doing God's work, they're persecuting the Lord. They led him on into Jerusalem. The Bible said he was three days without food or water. We would have lost some of y'all right there. Three days without eating? No, no, no. Three days without eating. Hallelujah. Something was working on Paul and he didn't know what was going on. He said, Paul, I want you to go and inquire. No, he told Ananias had a vision. He said, I want you to go down to a street called Straight. Lord have mercy. Not too many people live on that street. <laughs> no, sir, they live on Crooked Road, Ben. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Go on down to a street car straight. There's a man, Paul, that's been praying that he ain't prayed before. How about when you get in trouble, you'll learn how to pray. Ah, you can think that nobody's doing anything but wait till you're in need. You'll learn how to bend your knees and say, oh, Lord, I know I haven't visited you in a long time, but I'm here now. Listen, God got a way that will make you pray. We were talking last week in Bible class. That's on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. We were talking last week in Bible class. What Peter said, now, James, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation. Count it all joy. That don't sound right, do it? I'm being lied on, about to lose my job, and you tell me count it all joy. Lord, have mercy. And I keep telling y'all, I don't know where y'all hear me or not. It ain't the devil all the time. The poor little devil was sitting on the sidewalk one day. Somebody said, what's wrong with you? He said, they, they blame everything on me. Well, it ain't the devil all the time. Sometimes God allows you to go through some things. Sometimes God got to break you. It could be from a sin. It could be from something that you're not doing. And I always tell folk, you know, money got to always come up. You can you have a pretty good bank account and don't want to give. God will break it down to nothing if you want to. <laughs> Hallelujah. He'll let you see where it came from. Because somebody got the wrong idea to think that it came from you. When, when the Lord said in, to, in the book of Micah that all the silver and all the gold belong to me. I bet Paul said I'm a big man, but when he lost his sight, I bet it didn't feel so big anymore. He said, go down there to a man named Ananias, a disciple of mine named Ananias, and let him pray for you. Did you hear him say, I don't want that Christian to pray for me. And Ananias didn't want to go. And I can't blame him. And then I said, Lord, I heard about this man. Matter of fact, he got papers in his pocket right now. And I bet I'm at the head of the list. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you imagine freeing a man that could take you to jail? Hallelujah. But I'm so glad. I said, I'm so glad. Uh, that Paul was a man of principle. I said, I'm so glad that if, if he was stuck on principle so much that he would want to kill Christians, now something happened on the inside. Something began to happen. The Bible said that when Ananias prayed for him, a few things happened to him. The Bible said the scales that were on his eyes that were preventing him to see, they fell from his eyes.
The Bible said that when he prayed, he was filled with the Holy Ghost. And they said when he opened his eyes, the Bible said he went to the synagogue and immediately started preaching Jesus Christ that he's the Son of God. What does God have to do to turn you around? I know I've been changed. I the angels in heaven that signed my name. I know I've been saved. God knew that Paul was a special vessel. He told Ananias, he's a chosen vessel. Chosen to do a work for the master. Chosen. But see, it's one thing about a holy vessel. If God going to use you, before you be can become a vessel of honor, you got to be broken and molded. Hallelujah. It's just like going down to the potter's house. He said, I went down to the potter's house. And the potter was sitting. That's a wheel, y'all. Just going around and potter sheep in it. And then it, it said that it got marred in the potter's hand. But the potter had the power to put it back together again. How many of y'all? ever been down like Humpty Dumpty. Seemed like they've been broken in too many pieces. They said all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty back together again. I don't know if they just when they got that song they do the Humpty Hump, but he couldn't do no Humpty Hump when he was broken all up. Hallelujah. God put Paul back together and immediately he started preaching Jesus Christ. He was hating Jesus. He was talking about the Christians and now he's preaching Christ in order to save them. Oh, what a change. Oh, he changed me. He saved me. He anointed me. He appointed me and he went. The Bible said, Paul, they could probably count a minimum of 30 churches that he started himself. Some said 40. But then when you count the churches started by the folk that he birthed, the number nobody knows but God. Don't worry if they call your name. People get so upset what they call them for. Why are they honoring them? I've been here longer than them. Listen, don't worry about your name being called here. God got the record. Mm -hmm. The Bible said, if you will bless somebody secretly, he will reward you openly. But if they never call your name down here, ha, you better be sure that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hallelujah. Paul began to preach. You know, when you first get saved, folk don't believe you saved. Did you hear? John got saved. John who? Not the John that live on Henry Street. Not that John. Not the John that drink all the liquor and smoke all that dope. Not that John. Then they become Thomas, Doubting Thomas. Jesus came. Visit the disciples and Thomas wasn't there. And when they, when, he, when they talked to him, they said Jesus was here. Thomas said, yeah. Right. He said, I won't believe it. If I can, unless I can put my hand in his side. All right for y'all non-believers. The Bible said they were in a meeting one time. Jesus didn't even bother to walk through the door. He walked through the wall and said to Thomas, Thomas, touch me, feel me. How now do you believe? What does God have to do before you believe? He went to Calvary. He gave his life on Calvary's cross. He told him if you destroy the temple, I'll build it up in three days. Ah, they hung him high, they stretched him wide. They put him in the grave, but three days later. Now, now men don't, got, don't get mad. The women got up early. 
early while you were still in stage three. <laughs> Went down to the tomb. Mm -hmm. With the spices, you know, they didn't embalm. You know, the Jews, they smart, they still don't embalm. Save them about $2,000. <laughs> Got a friend of mine who, he's a limousine driver. He called me, he go, Bishop, let me ask you a question. I just come from a funeral. And they went into the church and left the body in the hearse outside. I said, well, they don't waste no time, man. <laughs> they got to get that man in the ground before sundown the next day. We the only ones go crazy. Daddy been six uh, or half a year and you ain't been bad to see him yet, but now you having all these fits. Oh Lord. Uh-oh, get my coat, warm the car up. I gotta go. You looking at me strange. Mm -hmm. I don't care how much they love mom and daddy. Y'all seen anybody jump in the casket? No. He said, You gonna have to suffer. He's a chosen vessel, but He's going to have to suffer. Y'all think serving God is easy? Y'all think folk ain't going to do stuff to you because you say you say? If you do, I'm sorry to bust your bubble today. Yeah, just get saved. Yeah, get saved. Yes, you got to be saved. But don't you think because you say you're going to have a life of ease. You just stuck the target on your chest. The devil is sitting back. But, but, the, but the thing of it is, is once you have truly changed, not just with your mouth, but with your... Mm -hmm. Oh, people can quote some scripture, but it won't live none of them. You're going to try to pray to get somebody healed like the sons of Sceva. Demon ran, ripped their clothes off. The Bible said they ran out naked. Come trying to pray. He said, Jesus I know. Paul I know. But who are you? A fake. That's who you are. Them demons will tear you up. But if you've been changed, if you've been changed, you can call on Jesus. I call on the Lord and I got an answer. How you gonna prove me, Lord? How you gonna help me, Lord? What am I expecting now that I'm a chosen vessel? Well, the Bible said he was beat five times, given 40 stripes, save one. Uh, he was beaten with rods three times. Uh, he was stoned one time. Uh, three times suffered shipwreck. A night in the day in the journey in the deep. It means out in the water a night in the day. You say I ain't going fishing no more. Amen. Journeying often in pearls by my own countrymen. In pearls by the humans. In pearls by robbers in the wilderness in the sea. Falls, brethren. Lord have mercy. Folk that I live with, folk that I walk with and talk with, we ate together, we slept together. Now you turn your back, but I'm so glad that the Lord won't. He won't let you down. He won't let you down. If you lean on me, just lean on the Lord. Listen, you got to know for sure when you get out here in this world. You got to know for sure that you made a change. Did right. you be a big, big drinker, big or whatever you were? Uh, Next time your friend, so-called friend, see you, you go, hey, got some good stuff, man. Uh -huh. Just in. Uh -huh. You know, people are so crazy. A few months ago, they had some bad stuff going around in Alexander that killed a couple of people. And do you know that there were folk around? Where did they get it from? Did you just hear me? Two people just died. I know that's what I want. They didn't know what they were doing. See, that's what the enemy will get you. You blinded. 
how to leave. But all th the only thing the devil wants to do, he comes to kill, he comes to steal, and he comes to destroy. But I'm so glad that Jesus said that I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I'm so glad that I change. I'm so glad that I took on Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. What about you? If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, the enemies. I'm so glad that I'm saved. And I'm so glad you say, Thank you, sir. God knows I am. <laughs> Hallelujah. Think of where you would be right now if God hadn't saved you when he saved you. Think about it. Last week was Father's Day. If some of y'all fathers hadn't got saved, they'd been walking around. Mm. I don't believe daddy been going that long. But the Lord spared you. And that's why you ought to say, thank you, Lord. Could have been me. Outdoors. With no food. And no clothes. Or just alone. Without a friend. You ever been without a friend? Or just another number? was a tragic game, but guess what? But he didn't see fit to let none of these things be everybody standing. Every day by your power, he keep on, keep on keeping me. And I wanna say, thank you, Lord. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I changed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Give God a praise. So glad. So glad that he changed me. So glad that he made me walk right. So glad that he made me talk right. Pick me up out the miry clay. Place my feet on a rock. Aren't you glad about it? Well, why are you so sad? Aren't you glad about it? Even when you go through a bad day, you ought to be glad. Glad I got Jesus. Down. Glad I got him. Down in my soul. Make you want to walk right. Make you want to talk right. And if you call his name too much, Jesus, you'll mess around on your, going around by your desk. And think about him. Hey, look, what did the world wrong with you? That's all right. Try me if you want, but you ought to give God praise anytime you think about how good he's been to you. What I like about Paul was when he changed, the scales immediately fell off, and he had immediate response to the fact that Christ saved me. The Bible said immediately he went to the synagogue, the place where he was supposed to go and gather up folk and preach Jesus Christ. What are you waiting for? Amen. Amen. That's it. I'm scared. Uh, yeah. Scared of what? You wasn't scared when you was out there in the world. Uh -huh. Let's go get him. Uh, now let's go get him for Christ. Yeah. Hey. Hallelujah. I, I used to go to the party if I danced. Uh -huh. You know what Carlton Pearson said? Nobody asked you to stop dancing. <laughs> Just change partners. Yeah. Hello, Jesus, can I have this dance? Hallelujah. 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 Anybody need prayer for anything? Agape Worldwide Ministries and Pastor Renzo James Fields invites you to come worship with us in Springfield, Virginia. We're located 7240 FNG Boudinot Drive in Springfield, Virginia. Call 703-372-1174. Agape Worldwide Ministries. Real love, real people, real church.